Android 16 QPR1 Stable is now live and rolling out to Pixel devices. And guys, this is a big one. If you've been thinking that Android is beginning to look a little bit stale, the look, the feel getting a little bit old, well guys, that is changing right now because Material 3 Expressive is here and it is the biggest redesign to the Android interface in years. That being said, I'm gonna grab my Pixel 9 Pro XL and my Pixel 9 Pro Fold for comparison and we're gonna dive in. All right, guys, here is my Pixel 9 Pro Fold on the right, which is running the new QPR1 stable release. We have my Pixel 9 Pro XL, which is not. That will be your comparison point. Same wallpaper so that I think we have a nice consistent comparison. From this screen, you probably don't see a ton of things that are different, but there actually are a few things. So first off, look at the battery indicator up here in the top right hand corner. We do have a new battery icon with some new text there inside. We can zoom in a little bit closer on the old version, which is actually very hard to see based on my wallpaper. Let me do that so you can see it a little bit easier. It's definitely a bit easier to see like that. You get the general idea though, there is a difference. You can see some more differences, which are going to be uh, coming very, very soon in this discussion as well. What else is new though? So looking at your little at a glance widget, notice how it's up a little bit higher on the Pixel Fold. And the reason for that is they've actually kind of condensed it to give us an additional little bit of space there for icons on the home screen. You can also look down here at the search bar and notice that they are different as well. These additional little icons are sort of living inside their own little pill there at the end. Let's go ahead and pull down these quick settings and you can see the first truly, truly big difference here. We have completely redesigned the quick setting with lots of transparency. This is something that you're going to see throughout this device. You can see also that the brightness slider is different. There's this little line, a vertical line there in the middle. But what makes these quick settings really something special now is that they are so fully customizable. Yes, of course, you could go here and you could customize things by dragging these icons on and off. But over here, it is a completely new experience. You can still remove things now with a little minus button and then add them back with a plus so you're not having to actually drag them up and down. I think that's very, very intelligent. But you can also tap them and then expand them or shrink them and make things look exactly the way that you want. I personally like a very dense little four icon setup there. Notice there is also an undo button if you do something that you want to undo as well. I think that this is a huge, huge step in the right direction. I think that it looks much better. I like the functionality. I like the transparency. I like the customization. I like everything about it. You may also notice on this screen that there are some differences, some changes to the fonts as well. The system font itself has just changed with Android 16. It's just a little bit bolder. Just like we have a change to the brightness bar, we have a similar change to the volume bar. It now does have that line across the middle and that extends to this screen as well where you can change all the different volumes that all has a particular look to it. And if I begin playing some media, you'll see that same look and appearance here as well. If we lock the devices and take a look at the pin screen, you can see some changes here as well. Obviously the bolder fonts, but also you can see the wallpaper kind of shining through with some transparency. If we jump into our recents screen, you can see a difference here as well. Rather than an icon up top with these options, there's just a little pill, which does basically the same sort of thing, just in a different way. There are also lots of new little animations as well. You can't really feel what I'm feeling. Hopefully you can see it as I begin to dismiss this. It kind of wants to go slow and then right there it kind of pops and there's a little haptic bump there that tells me that that, that has happened and then I can continue dismissing that notification over here. It just sort of slowly fades away and dismisses. There's really nothing else going on. And like I said, there are just a ton of little changes like that in terms of animations. Let's see if we see anything different here on the recent screen. If I open this up, do you see a difference there? Let's go ahead and scroll to the end and clear all. That looks pretty similar. If we jump into our system settings though, you can see some pretty big differences there. So obviously we have these little colored icons next to our different sections. 
Oh, something else I just now remembered to mention as well. Look at the cellular signal icon. Rather than being just like the little wedge shape, you have individual bars now up there as well. So that is something else that's new. Back to the uh, the settings, though. You'll just notice that all the subcategories just look a little bit different. They've really redesigned almost everything on this device. Let's go down to the notifications on lock screen section, and you'll see that rather than just being a little pop-up, you actually have a whole section with a little graphical demonstration. If we go back home and go into wallpaper and style, there are also some really big changes there. I think we just crashed over here on this one. Can we try that again? Nope, we're just crashing. That's not good. One storage clearage later and we are back in business. This is, again, completely redesigned. You can see we do have our suggested wallpapers still, but it does look very, very different. You can also see the different like color palette suggestions there. We have to scroll down a little bit to get to that now. And you can see that when you scroll down, things kind of shrink away. There's another one of those about a million new animations that takes place. Under app grid, there are some changes there as well. You have the numbered grids here and you only have small and medium now. And there may be another option for different devices, but they've kind of changed the way that that works and actually taken away an option, which I definitely don't love. If we switch over to the lock screen, you'll see that there are some cool things going on here. Rather than scrolling through the different clocks, you're going to select it from this option here. And then you might even have some things like style where you can change the width, the thickness of the face. You can change the color and the size. If you go into the wallpaper picker, things do look fairly similar, but you do have some new options here like this live effects option. We'll just use this photo here. What it's going to do is it's scanning and then it's actually popping some of this image out and you can change these different shapes. I don't think this is doing the best job in the world. It's just not a great photo to do this, but you can kind of get the general idea that it's popping it out and letting her kind of go off that little shape that you're using to cut it out and you can actually sort of change the colors that it's pulling as well and that color is going to come from the image itself. You can also add weather effects that can be local, like what's actually happening around you, or you can pick from individual effects that you just maybe like the look of. And then, of course, you do have the cinematic option as well, which is, again, going to sort of scan the wallpaper, and then it should kind of give you this, like, depth effect. You can see that kind of moving around in, like, a kind of strange way here. Before, really, all you could do was that depth effect. These other options weren't an option. Another really big one, for some people maybe the biggest one, once you have enabled developer options on this device, which I don't think I have, maybe I have, yes there it is, developer options, once you've done that, if you scroll down towards the very bottom, you'll see this option here, enable desktop experience features. What does that mean? Well guys, that is the desktop mode. It is here, it is on the stable version of this device. So what we have here being powered by my Pixel 9 Pro Fold is this desktop view. I'm using a lap dock here that has a trackpad and a keyboard. And you can see there is my app drawer. I can fire up different applications. We'll just open up Feedly and it'll pop up in a floating window. I can drag it to one side and have it kind of snap over there. I can open up multiple things. This is for all intents and purposes Google's version of DeX. And in fact, Samsung DeX is now built on top of this. Go into my external display settings on my phone and actually shrink this a little bit. It looks a little bit too big at this point. I think that looks a little bit cleaner. For those of you who've been running the beta for a little while, you know, these things are always a little bit less exciting because you've already had the excitement. But for normal people who don't bother running betas, people like my wife, who is actually currently using my Z Fold 6, when I update this on her Pixel 9 and show it to her, I think she might look at this and ponder putting her SIM back in her, her pretty pink uh, Pixel 9. This is a really, really big overhaul with a lot, a lot of new features. And in fact, there are a handful of smaller things that I do want to quickly mention that come from blog.google.com, things that are going to be rolling out here over the next little bit. So revise your writing with AI-powered suggestions 
in Gboard. This is something that I think debuted with the Pixel 10, but it's rolling back to other devices. Just tap for an easy to use interface that can revise your tone, be more formal, expressive, or concise. The thing that I am most interested in seeing, you see the little writing tools thing there, is proofread, and apparently this is rolling to other devices. If I can have their proofread on my Z Fold 6, I will be very, very excited, and that is apparently going to be a thing relatively soon, but you're going to have more options in Gboard. Browse and favor Emoji Kitchen stickers. Remix your own. Actually use Emoji Kitchen more than I should. You basically give it a couple of emojis and it tries to create one that can be some sort of Frankenstein's monster, but now you can browse, browse that library, save your favorite options, and explore unique emoji options created just for you. Share audio with a friend or broadcast to a group. Pair two LE Audio Bluetooth headphones to your phone. So that's kind of a cool thing that I'll probably never use, but if you have two LE compatible uh, headphones, you can both hear that audio simultaneously. So again, small use case, but potentially interesting. And then send your best photos and videos in a tap. A redesigned quick share. This is something that's actually, I think, already on Samsung devices this new version of Quick Share, but we're going to be getting it everywhere very soon. As usual for big updates like this, my SIM is going to go back into a Pixel. This is the Pixel 9 Pro that I was showing you, and my SIM is already back in there. It has been taken out of my Z Fold 7 that I've really, really been enjoying. I think that the timing's actually really good with me still trying to make up my mind on the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. I'll use the 9 Pro Fold for a little while, make sure that this update feels nice and stable. I can answer some questions uh, in those comments down below, and then hopefully that'll help me make up my mind on the 10 Pro Fold as well, which you guys have been very, very vocal on. And I would say that in terms of polling and in terms of comments that more of you want me to get the 10 Pro Fold to review it than not. So that is definitely something that is a factor in my mind. Continue to hit those comments though and tell me what you think about this update. Is it as big as I'm saying that it is? I think it's a very big deal. This is a big visual refresh that doesn't come very often. But of course, everybody's going to have their own thoughts on it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. To me, Material 3 Expressive is the best looking version of Android and I, I don't really even think that it's all that close. I think that this <laughs> looks absolutely fantastic. But your thoughts are going to be yours. Let me know in those comments down below. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>